Hello friends, welcome to my channel, my Silpadal Gambulkar. From this video, we will start new series on Salesforce integration. In this video, we will see basics of integration. This will help you for interviews and also it will help you for Salesforce LWC integration project. In next videos, we will see how to do integration in Salesforce LWC component. Now see, first question, what is integration and why do we need integration? Integration is needed to connect two or more systems together to share data, user interfaces, business logic, etc. So what do you mean by integration? Connecting two or more systems together for some specific purpose, maybe to share data, user interfaces or business logic. That is called as integration. Now see, from this diagram, all concepts related to integration will be clear. Look at this. This is system A. And suppose on system A, we are using Salesforce. This is system B, which is outside Salesforce. Now see, from our system A, we want to access data from the system B. Now see, no any external system will allow to use its data, right? So for that purpose, we have API. So see, this system B will not allow to use data directly. So for that purpose, system B will provide API. So any other system can access this data only by using API. So API basically it is a set of rules or some protocols. So by following that rules or by following that protocol, by following that API, any other system can access data from this system, right? And who will provide this API? By system B only, right? And those API will be saved somewhere. Now, what is the meaning of web service? So see, web service is nothing but API only. But web services are those API, those are available on internet. APIs that can be used over internet are called as web services. That means web service is subset of API. API can be used on standalone system, it can be used in a network or it can be used over the internet. API those are used over internet are called as web services. Now see, our system A which has Salesforce want to access this data, right? System B has provided this API, right? Now see, this API is saved somewhere. Right? It is saved on some system. Now, that API can be accessed by using this URL. See, again I am repeating. API are saved on some system. Right? That API can be accessed by using some URL. That URL is called as endpoint or API endpoint. Right? Now, see. Our system A wants to access this data. So, what system A will do? It will make request to API. How it can make request? By using this URL. That means by using this endpoint. Right? And this request in integration is called as callout. So these are the terminologies those are used in integration. Endpoint means what? URL on which API are saved. Right? Request is made to the endpoint. Right? On which API are saved. Web services are those API that can be used over internet. This system A is making request to this API by using endpoint. And this request is called as callout. Now see, this system A will make callout or request to API. This API or web service will communicate with database. And after that, it will give response to system A. So this is the overall picture of integration. Now see, what is there in request and what is there in response? Request has a method, parameters, body and headers. While response has status code, body and headers. Now what is the meaning of this? See, request has method, means by which method it is make a request. So there are various methods, get, post, put, delete, patch. So which method is used? It is mentioned in request. Then in request, some data is sent. How the data is sent? By using some parameters or body. Then we have headers. Headers have metadata or extra information about this data. For example, see. What is the content type of data? Maybe it is XML or JSON, right? So such kind of extra information is provided in headers. In the same way, we have response. Response has status code. What is the meaning of status code? So see, those are numbers 200, 404, 403, likewise. This status code tells whether our request is fulfilled or not. Then we have body. So whatever the data that is sent from system B to system A, right? It is sent in body. Then we have headers. So just like headers in request, we have headers in response. 
it will tell extra information about the data just like content type whether our data is in json format or xml format likewise so here we have request or call out and for that we are getting some response request have methods parameters body and headers while response have status code body and headers now see what are the types of integration for what purpose integration is done we have the type of integration suppose integration is done to share data then it is called as data integration suppose we have integration to share user interface for example see to share google maps widget so if integration is done to share user interface it is called as user interface integration third type of integration is business logic integration so see when any system is integrated to share some business logic for example see calculating interest so such kind of integration is called as business logic integration so based on purpose of integration we have different types of integration data integration user interface integration and business logic integration now see in salesforce integration two terms are frequently used one is inbound integration and another is outbound integration now what is the meaning of inbound integration and outbound integration it represents direction of integration now see this in and out are respect to salesforce see this is our salesforce system right when any request is coming towards salesforce it is called as inbound integration see this is our system right now see this direction is with respect to salesforce right now see for our salesforce system if we are getting any request from the external system it is called as inbound integration it is coming into salesforce right that's why inbound integration now see any request that is going outside the salesforce that is called as outbound integration any request that is made from the salesforce request that is going outside the salesforce that is called as outbound integration so there are two directions of integration inbound integration which is coming towards salesforce outbound integration where request is going outside the salesforce now see what is call out so any request that is sent to the external system that is called a call out already we have seen call out is a request made to api which in turn communicates with other system to get data this call out or request has these four parts right already we have seen for this request we get response and this response have these components so already we have seen next terminology endpoint or it is also called as api endpoint so already we have seen endpoint is a specific url or address where api is available so address or url where apis are available that is called as endpoint or api endpoint now see what is an api api stands for application programming interface api can be defined as set of rules or protocols that allow different software applications to communicate and interact with each other so basically api is a set of rules or protocols and what is the purpose of api so it enables multiple software applications to communicate and interact with each other there are two types of api one is called as open api and another is called as secured api so from the name only you will come to know api which doesn't require authentication is called as open api and api which requires authentication is called as secured api in next video we will have example for open api and secured api so open api means api which doesn't require authentication right and secured api means api which requires authentication now see what are web services so already we have seen web services are api only api which are available over internet those are called as web services right web services are a subset of apis so api can be any api right api can be used on single system api can be used in lan api can be used over internet so api those are used over internet those are called as web services web services are special type of apis and that is the difference between api and web services now see there are multiple types of web services two are very common those are called as soap and rest soap web service and rest web service here we will see difference between soap web service and rest web service so look at this soap stands for simple object access protocol and rest stands for representational state transfer 
SOAP web service supports only XML format, while REST web service supports HTML, XML, and JSON format. SOAP web service supports multiple protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, SMP, UDP, while REST web service supports only two protocols, HTTP and HTTPS. SOAP web service requires more resources, for example, see, more bandwidth, more computation power, while REST web service requires less resources and that's why it makes it more powerful. And that is the reason REST web service is preferred over the SOAP web service. Now see, SOAP web service is more secure while REST web service is less secure. Reason is, SOAP web service requires WSDL file to access while REST web service can be accessed through URL. Because of WSDL file, SOAP web service become more secure but also it become more complex. For example, see, suppose there are any changes in API, then that changes has to be communicated via WSDL file to the all the clients, right? And it requires more effort. But that is not the case with the REST web service. It can be easily accessed through URL. So updated APIs can be easily accessed by using this URL. And that's why REST web service is very easy to use. Problem is, it is less secure, but it can be avoided by providing authentication. Now we will see REST web service methods. So there are get, post, put, patch and delete web service methods. So here you can see. Already we have seen request has one component that is method. So what are those methods? These methods can be get, post, put, patch and delete. So see they have some specific purpose. For example see, get method can be used to retrieve data. Post method can be used to insert new data. Put method can be used to insert new data or update existing data. Patch method can be used to update existing data and delete method can be used to delete existing data. So these are the different web services methods. In upcoming videos, we will see how to use these methods. Now see, in response, we have status codes, right? It is also called as response codes. So already here we have seen response has status code and it tells whether our request is fulfilled or not. Now see, our status code is of three digits. If status code starts from one, that means information or response. What is the meaning of this? The request was received and continuing process. So see, server got the request and it is doing some processing. If status code starts from two, that means our request is successful. So see, the request was successfully received, understood and accepted. Now see, if our status code starts from three, that means redirection. What is the meaning of this? Further action needs to be taken in order to complete the request, right? So it stands for redirection and sender must take action on the request. If our status code starts from 4, that means it is client error. That is the error from the client set. So see, the request contains bad syntax or cannot be fulfilled. Then we have status code that starts from 5. It represents server error. See, when our status code starts from 4, it represents client error. When our status code starts from 5, it represents server error. So see, the server failed to fulfill an apparently valid request. If server failed, then it gives server error. And it is represented by the status code which starts from 5. Now see, these are some common status code. If our request code is 200, that means our request is successful. It indicates that request has succeeded. Then 400, it stands for bad request. So see, server could not understand the request. So when server could not understand the request, we get status code 400. Next is 401, it stands for unauthorized. What is the meaning of this? It requires, our request requires authentication. Our request must have authentication parameters. Next is 403. It stands for forbidden. What is the meaning of this? Not allowed to access particular functionality. So see, request is allowed, but client is not allowed to access some particular functionality. That is the meaning of status code 403. Client is not allowed to access some particular functionality. 
then very famous status code 404 that means resource not found see server could not found requested resource that is invalid endpoint i will show you one example of status code 404 see i have access one url now see suppose here i am adding some alphabets something like this right what is the meaning of this we are trying to access this resource which is obviously it is not available on this website right now see if i press enter so here you can see file or directory not found what is our status code 404 now see next status code 500 it stands for internal server error what is the meaning of this error occurred at server side while processing the request so see status code which starts from 5 it stands for server error right then we have status code 503 what is the meaning of this service unavailable when server is unable to handle requests we get status code 503 so these are some popular status code or response codes now see any external system will not easily provide their api when we work in actual environment so our organization has some tie with the external system and by that we get access of api but see for learning purpose we require some free api so from where we can get those api so see here i have listed out some websites these websites provides some free APIs. These APIs we can use for our learning purpose. Now see, we have one popular tool that is Postman. It is an application that allows the testing of web APIs. In next video, we will see how to use this Postman tool to test our APIs. Okay, so we will meet in next video. Thank you.